Hey guys, welcome back to this week's quick dive uh, research. You know, it's our second one, you know. Uh, the first video did pretty well. Uh, the comments and the views, you know, uh, keep them up. So just let us know, right, whether you like to like us to continue this sort of content for you guys. Now, this week, we're going to talk about Syntax, right? Syntax, if, if you look on, uh, you know, um, it's one of the best performing stocks out there for Malaysia. But I think when you look at the year, it's down a little bit. So we're going to be addressing the question today, what is Syntax? You know, so you know, whether it has legs to run because uh, you know, it has done really well in the past doesn't mean that it will do well in the future. All right, guys, uh, as always, uh, we like to give disclaimers. Uh, we do not own any shares uh, in Syntax. And of course, uh, none of what we say should be taken as financial advice. If you really need that sort of advice, please speak to a professional. So if you're figuring out whether you should manage your own money or leave it to professionals, we have something in store for you this Thursday, the 16th of June. Um, we want to share with you our views and how we can help guide you if you should be a fund manager. And what we mean by that is actually do some a little bit of comparison, share with you some methodology of if you should manage your own yep. money and see whether results in the past, mm -hmm. you know, we're not saying that it should repeat itself, but give you clues of what has happened in the past that can help you manage money better. So don't forget to sign up. The registration is in the comment section below. And more importantly is this, the tools we'll be using today mm -hmm. is something called Ticker. And we do have an affiliate link. Um, please, you know, um, check the affiliate link in the comment section. We really do appreciate that if you click using our link. So MJ, sign yeah. tax. Um, does it look good for now? Yeah. So if you if you look on a max, uh, if you turn it to max, right, it's twen yeah. up twenty two x, right? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's one of the best uh, corporate stories in Malaysia this is excluding dividends and you can see the dividend use like 2-3% yeah right? it's even better than FD right now actually. yeah definitely <laughs> um, if you look on a 5 year basis it actually uh, recovered quite well mm -hmm. from COVID mm -hmm. and it's up uh, even though it's up 25% in 5 years but if you look at the COVID lows right up yeah. to today you know, yeah. it's done really well correct however if you look at the year to date it's actually down mm. year to date uh, it's down, I believe, fifteen uh, percent. Let's see, yeah, uh, year to date. Yes. No more. Oh wait, oh, it's more. Okay. It's about thirty percent. Sorry, then I clicked on the one year. Yes, sorry, the one year yeah. is down fifteen percent. The year to date is down even more. Yeah. So uh, I think a lot of people be asking, right? Like if it's down by, by a third, and this sort of uh, a lot of people for those who don't know consider Syntex a blue chip company. So a blue chip company down thirty percent, right? That might seem to be a juicy opportunity. And mm. I think we're going to explore today. We're not going to give answers as usual, but we're going to explore today Our whether thinking process or la. not, exactly, whether yeah. or not uh, Syntax is, uh, you know, an interesting opportunity. Now, uh, where would you like to start? Let's start at the website. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, I wanted to go straight into ticket. Okay, but website is more important. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so you can see at the right there, yeah. sometimes uh, they, will, they will put it there. Usually yeah. the, the bigger companies in Malaysia, they, they will embed. Google, la. correct. They will embed. And this okay. is the wiki link or the company link? Oh, this is the company link. Okay, fantastic. Yes. yes. So um, there's actually a lot to look about, but again, we always want to start with the business, yep. right? Yep. What do they do? So if you can go to business and uh, we'll start with the overview. Yep, yes, maybe. let's start with let's the overview. overview. Browse our okay. products. Mm. So end-to-end -end packaging expertise. Okay, what 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 does that Plastic even mean? Plastic rolls. Yep. Okay, uh, okay. This is for me. This is very, very high level. Fifty thousand feet. Yes, correct. Yeah. Sixty over country. So if they export to sixty over countries. You know they are in the export sector. So mm -hmm. that's uh, always a positive for correct. us at least. Yeah, uh, quite a that's big worldwide. manufacturing facilities. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Seventeen plants. So you know in they are into some sort of a manufacturing. They give you a hint that it's plastic. Yes. Packaging. Uh, but packaging doesn't necessarily mean plastic only. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean. Of course. Yeah, of course. Obviously. We are coming from a perspective of we know nuts of this company. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. And we want to uh, start at a point where we, we're just like just a blank piece mm -hmm. of paper, mm -hmm. right? So we're just guessing here, looking at a plastic roll and knowing that packaging may, may not necessarily mean pl uh, plastic only. Are they our questions that we will form in our head is like, are they only into plastics? Yeah, or of are course. they the whole breadth of packaging? 
um, are they concentrated on certain kinds of packaging? Mm-hmm. Maybe food only, yeah, correct, or maybe uh, corrugated boxes. We don't What's know. What's the purpose of the packaging? Correct, as well. correct, right. correct, correct, correct. So I think we can go to like the browse our. Or do you want to scroll through the whole thing? No, or do you want to go I, straight I think, to the product? Uh, product maybe. No, browse. no, you scroll on. Top. Yeah, browse our product. Uh, so scroll the the top. The yeah. oh, scroll on top. Okay, browse our product. Yeah. Let's see. Yes, yeah. There you go. There you go. <coughs> so you can see. Oh, it's the oh, same. Okay, okay, it's same. the same. Yeah, ah, yeah, so it tells you packaging. industrial packaging, consumer packaging, okay. okay, innovation. Okay, that's the. So end if of you it. want to learn more about each of these, you can click into them. But you know now they, you know, you can see what they do. All those the those films and thin you know, flame, thin film, stretch thin flame. Correct. And this is uh, I can't remember if there's an industrial word for it. Just so let's say we get this information right. Uh, I'll ask you the same question that I'm about to answer, which mm. is. What can you gather from this alone, from a business perspective? Now, for me, it is that they are doing something that is very uh, that you can foresee in the future. They will still need, mm. right? So they are. I wouldn't say they are future proof, mm. but certainly they are future ready. Yes, in that sense. yes. And unless so, unless someone finds a new way of packaging. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. what do you like? If you just look at this information, what can you gather? For me, uh, I look at it as okay. There's a differentiation between just outer packaging and food grade packaging. Ha. Huh. Because food grade packaging involves that your inner linings of your packaging actually touches food. Yes. Does it need uh, a certain S- kind of certification? Uh, does it require uh, uh, um, a certain uh, for, um, independent bodies to actually yep. verify and all that? Exactly. So is that when I think of that, then I think is there a barrier to entry? Is there you know I, these are questions? I don't know the answers. These are questions that I would you know try to form and, and try to figure out as I go along. Yep, yep, I think, exactly. I think uh, one thing about investing and about research is always trying to form the questions rather than the answers. Yeah, I think that you're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely okay. right. So anything else you want to see this? So I believe now we cheated a little bit. Yeah. We did read about science text <laughs> a little bit. Um, how uh, so? If you uh, okay, wait. No, this is the these are the packaging plants, right? So yeah. they have another business segment. Yes. Right. So if we go back to our businesses. Uh, hmm, there there you go. This one, property. This one. Yeah. So you can see, you can click on browse our properties. They are into. I wouldn't. I'm not sure if it's everything for the B40. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But they have uh, houses in uh, Malacca. They have houses Kota Tinggi. Uh, let's see. Wow, it's quite spread out. Uh. I, yeah. I know they have a very, I mean, this is from my experience staying in Johor yep. before. Yep. They have a Taman sign text in Johor. Yes, so yes. when you have a Taman, it sounds big. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds yeah. big. La. It's like Taman Masing, which I don't think Masing even has. Uh. Right. I don't think so. La. Right. Yeah. So now that we know this, right, one of the things that I, I like to find out is what, what's the split, right? Yeah. And so one thing I really like about sign tax, which is quite rare in Malaysia, mm. and this is something that all of us should look out for, is when you go to investor relations, mm-hmm. usually they will, sh- <coughs> they will show you the financial report and report. But what they have here that's unique is the investor presentations. Yes. So the investor presentations is, think of it like a... S- uh, <coughs> a summarized version of the annual report. So if you can click on the latest one, which is very recent, March yeah. 16. Yeah. Yeah, they will show you, you know, what they do, how they've grown. And there, segment. there you go. So this is the revenue by the segment. So about, you know, let's call it three quarters come from uh, packaging, the, mm. the thing in blue, and then uh, another quarter comes from property development. Now, what's interesting is when you scroll down to the operating profit, mm. suddenly it becomes more 50-50. Mm. Right. Even, even though property development was a small chunk. I mean, yeah. one third. Lah. <coughs> yeah. One third. So it gives you a sense of, uh, you know, which one is more profitable right mm. now. But of course, we should always dig into the PNL to make sure that we have not, uh, that these numbers are not uh, in a way tricking us. I'm not yeah. saying the company is trying to trick us. Yes. They're representing accurately, but we have to see maybe we there are, are certain items. Like verifying, correct. yeah. There's certain items in the, the, the PNL that might uh, affect that. So well, yeah. Net cash from operations growing 13%. Right. So Giga, you wow. can so it's really good, right? Because yeah. uh, this is very rare on on uh, you know most companies in Malaysia. Yeah. But yeah. how will you proceed from here, John? Okay, so um, this in a way helps uh, shortcut a lot of investors yeah. Yeah. Uh, digging. Uh, again, go back to trusty numbers. I will yeah. go back to ticker again. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna type in sign text. So you see, 
the biggest resource or the most precious resource that everyone has is time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And what we try to do is not to say that investing, uh, you should adopt all shortcut methods. What we're trying to say is that we're at a stage where we're screening. And when you're screening, right, you want to use your time in the most efficient manner mm-hmm. to determine not whether to buy or sell, you know, it's to determine whether you should dig more. I think that's the point we're yeah. trying to, yeah. So at this point, uh, what we find very uh, useful is because while the investor presentation has shown you some historical performance, um, what aggregated financial data providers like Ticker does is you can stretch it back to what, 10, 15, let's yes. see how many years that these guys do. Uh, yeah, 05. So, wow, that's more than 05, 15. Yeah, 17 years. Yeah, it's insane. So you can drag it all the way back. Yeah. Um, and you can even, the beauty what I like about Ticker is that you can actually copy the whole data set. Yeah, absolutely. And put it into an Excel. So we don't, uh, we don't uh, crowd the screen too much. So let's, what do you say, 10 years? Now, b- before I noticed something very interesting that yeah. I want to highlight on Twitter, you go back to company overview. Oh, yes. And if you look at the description, look at that. So you see, uh, just read a portion, right? Yeah. It operates in two segments, packaging and profit plan development. The company offers various packaging products such as stretch film, polypropylene, uh, uh, polypropylene strapping bands, FIBC bags, HDPE. Now, all these are very useful information yes. because now you can take this and say, okay, what are all these things? Correct. Learn what are the functions? Correct. And then you can, what you can do now is you can, I wouldn't say predict, but you can definitely give some broad forecast of Correct. where these items are growing. Growing, correct. What are the markets that we, and there's a lot more here, so you can see about bulk bags, solar, ethylene, vinyl. I'm just simply reading yeah. off here, but yeah. the, this is all this very useful correct. information. Correct. Right? So yeah. that's and really you, important. Look at, you see? Yeah, all yeah. these are aggregated. <coughs> I don't think they have the links directly. I, I may be wrong. Yeah, because I remember it's just uh, aggregate the event, but you don't have the links. You know, um, maybe a shout out to the Ticker founders. Um, we try to bring them on a podcast, yeah, yeah. but busy, they, busy they've been people. very busy. Yep. Um, a beauty, if we they can incorporate this, is there's a link directly to, to that would be, awesome, yeah. be aw- awesome, man. Yeah, but coming back to the numbers. So yes. let's do 10 years, I guess. 2012 to 2021. Okay, yeah. So 10 years. Uh, let's plot it out. Wow, look at right. the growth. I, straight away, I see, I look, it's like, wow. <laughs> yes, so it's very impressive. Now, I would like to draw uh, everyone's attention into this very important bit. And I think this is uh, one thing you need to answer if you are considering Syntex yes. as an investment, right? Yeah. Look at the change year on year for oh, the yeah. total revenues. Now, what is the trend? Like, can we, are we are able to click on it, right? Yeah, we're we able see. to plot it. So what, what is the, the, the trend here, John? Uh, from a small base, it was growing very yeah. aggressively. But when they hit a big base, that's where they struggle. Uh. Yes. So like for, you see, example, three point, when they hit the three billion kind of kind of uh, revenue base, I think that's where they struggle a little bit. And I think this is where the thinking part about where is the boundary? Yes. Yeah, where's the boundary? And re- referring back to the earlier uh, point we brought about the revenue segmentation. Yes, yes. Because you can, plastic I, plastic packaging, I think it's a very global market. Uh, I think they, they are a global player. Uh, when you go into like property development, you have higher margins, but then you're very geographically uh, centered around Malaysia. Yeah. So that's where your thinking will be, okay, revenue is slowing. They are probably making more money in property development, but even then, there is a cap because you're geographically uh, centered around Malaysia. What are your thoughts? And and you also have to like keep finding land to build Correct. on it. And so generally properties are very lumpy now. Yes. You might hear what I just said and think, well, therefore, Syntex is not good. Yeah. Not true. Mm. Because one thing you need to understand, and this is something we haven't discovered also, yes. is what exactly is the property investing or the property building strategy mm. for Syntex. Correct, correct. Right, it seems to me as you, you brought up the word just now, they're pretty spread out with, yes. their, with their companies, right? Yeah. Uh, with, with their projects. Projects. Development projects. So, okay, that's one clue, right? Mm, that mm. they're all over. So that might cause you to be excited mm. uh, because now they're able to build uh, everywhere. They have a name, they have things like that. Yes. Now, the second bit is, if you understand the property segment, one of what they are notorious for is the ability to raise funds. Oh, yes. The property segment is fraught with all sorts of <coughs> things like that. Yeah. And that's why generally it has been unattractive for people to invest in the industry. Precisely. But what is unique about Syntex? What is unique about Syntex is the fact 
that they have this property segment, but they don't need to worry about raising funds mm. because they already have a cash cow, we call it, mm-hmm. which is the, uh, you know, the, the packaging. Packaging, yes. Correct. So that can really help. It's uh, like a twin engine uh, in a sense correct. that, yeah, um, I think businesses, we've, we've discovered a few. Yeah. Um, we're not going to name here because we're going to go into yeah, another yeah, rabbit hole. Course, course. But I think what you raise, uh, this point that you raise about having sources of cash flow <laughs> generation from other parts of the business to help you fund is, is, is interesting because yeah, yeah. a lot of property developers, they focus so much yep. and property development construction is, is a cash flow game. That's always Absolutely. a struggle. And Absolutely. when you are desperate to generate cash flow, what happens? Your building material yeah. quality yeah. will suffer. You will do raise money that has very high interest rates. And because of that, you know, we were just discussing with our research team last night on a mm-hmm. particular company. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. They are raising funds to build projects and mm-hmm. their average uh, interest rates is about 7%. So if your internal rate of return for your project is like five and you're, you're borrowing money at seven to, to, to actually build a project, is that really a good business model? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But then Syntex doesn't have this yep, uh, exactly. problem. And I think another insight about the property segment is that one of the reasons why it's hard also from an operational viewpoint is that you know things like supplies don't come on time, all right. managing all these logistics. But if you have the cash and you say, well, if you do this right now, I can give you this amount. Yes. That's a big advantage that other property developers don't have. Exactly. And I think <coughs> when you have cash, I think suppliers more, more likely listen to you. Lah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, Let's, uh, okay. So I, I, I think we- want to go cash flow? We went through, yeah, let's look at the cash flow. I don't think we touched the balance sheet, but we'll touch a little bit on the ratios, which we didn't touch last week. Yeah. So, okay. okay so you let can me see. clear this first. Huh? So we can get just the net income and operating. Yep, yep. So we get the net right. income and then we get operating the, cash flow. Right. Okay. You can look at that. Wow. Right? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So maybe let's look at another number, which is free cash flow. Yeah. Free cash uh, flow. I don't think they put it. Like, uh, they, they, they do. They do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, right. Okay. Yeah, they do. There you go. So for those of you not aware what free cash yeah. flow is, it's just your operating cash flow net off your capital expenditure. Yes. Correct. Uh, more or less. Yeah. More or less. So you can see this is a, this is a rare site to behold where yeah. the free cash flow is not just bigger, mm then the net income, it is consistently bigger. Yes. Especially since 2018. Yeah. So that's uh, that's quite amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's really not much for us to say. <laughs> uh, there's a reason why they are one of the uh, best stock, best performing stocks. I think in more Malaysia than 100x, also. I'm not mistaken. But yeah, since the beginning, maybe. But yeah. I mean, we saw just now since 05, they are up what, 22, 22x yeah. before dividends. How many companies can do 22x? Yeah. So if dividends? you include dividends, which based on our own calculation on average is roughly 25% of an investor's return. Yeah. That means right their true let's call it returns is closer to maybe 28x 28 or 29x. To, yeah. So um one area yeah any anything else you want to nah, I think we may move on to the ratios. Can, let's look at the ratios. Okay. Okay. So let's look at returns on capital now. Mm. Again, the trend we look at that right. It used to be sixteen over percent. Yeah, let me um, just get rid of this. Ding, ding. Yeah, returns of capital. So it used to be anywhere between fifteen to eighteen percent, and then uh, right now it's dropping uh, downwards to you know twelve, thirteen percent now. But even then, uh, how many companies can actually give you a return on capital? Yeah. On average, I think maybe. For those of you unfamiliar looking at these numbers, an average company, for them to give you high single digits is already very, very good. Absolutely. And then these guys are giving you double digit. It may not be high double digit. I've not seen maybe certain stages of an early startup or, or a business that is already in equilibrium. Yep, giving. Yep, Have exactly. you seen anyone doing 100%? 100%. Yeah, I think like uh, guys like... Uh, so certain companies can do that because mm. they play around their books. Yes. So um, I won't call out, but certain telcos do this, <laughs> right? Uh, they, you know, the asset disappears. And Disapp- so the yeah, returns yeah, yeah, of capital yeah. were high. But yeah. I think like people like, I'm not sure. 
I remember doing like a Facebook. Nestle. I think Nestle is almost Nestle, close to hundred. There was like one time I did. I think it was my EG. There was a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My EG. Is my EG high. was. I remember there was one yeah. year they did a hundred percent return yep. on it. because I think very uh, asset light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Asset light, and that's where uh, capex is not that heavy. Yes. Yeah. But understand that usually companies with that sort of high, like it's not sustainable. Yeah, correct. Over correct, time, correct, it will, correct, it will, it will, it will trend will, down. Uh. Correct. There's there's no such thing as ROIC. Yeah. So. In layman terms, what does it mean? That means for every dollar I put in this company, yep, yep, yep. it's generating 13, per, uh, one, okay, let's say I put 100 bucks, right? Yeah, this yeah, guy correct. is giving me 13 bucks. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that like my EG, because it's 100% me, I, I give that 100 bucks, give me back 100 exactly. bucks. Exactly. Those happen probably on certain instances, but exactly. not consistently. <laughs> yeah. So got, 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 Ponzi scheme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, but that's for maybe two years, right? Yeah. Two year ROIC. Two, two year ROIC. Now, one thing interesting and why we like this number a lot is because if you look at 2012 onwards, so mm. it, uh, I'll do it on my PC, okay. it's fine, I'll read out the number. So you go from 2012 onwards to let's say 2018, right, in terms mm. of returns. Mm. Let's say, uh, no, 2017, okay? So if you look at 2018 and 2017, it grew by about 600% in stock price, mm, right? Mm, uh, mm. And you can see that's when the ROIC was on average higher than what it is today. Yeah. And when you go from 2018 onwards, so i.e. a five-year kind of rolling numbers, right? Uh, where it dropped, it just dropped, right? By two to 3% on average. Um, the returns are now 25% in five years. Yeah. So you can see how important this, uh, these numbers mm. uh, are la, and mm. how it can actually affect the stock price. So I suspect the reason that it dropped is because uh, they entered the property segment yes. and that is a lower returns on capital kind of Correct. Kind right. of even though it's bigger in revenue and even operating profit, yeah, but uh, right. it's lumpy, yes. and maybe that's the reason why you know the market yes. has not assigned uh, yeah. you know a more attractive valuation to it, you know? Exactly. You see, it's, it once it hits three, right? That's it. It's like yeah, plateaued. So this is very interesting because if mm. you look at okay, if you ask any any big company, right, from twenty seventeen to twenty twenty one, it mm. increased its revenue by one point four billion, mm. no, one point. 2 billion, 1.25 billion. Mm. Most would say that that's like a success, right? But why is it that the price hasn't moved? moved? The reason is because it's not about how much revenue you make. It's not simply about how much profit you make. Mm. It's also how much profit you make based on the investments that you have to put in. Correct, correct, <coughs> correct. So if, you, if you put in 10 bucks and it only gives you 10 bucks, a lot of businessmen will tell you that that's not a good investment actually. <laughs> Over time, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so yeah, anything on add before we go on to the ratios, the the, the ones below. Uh, I think maybe just touch a little bit Can. on the balance sheet. Um, I don't think they have a lot of cash as compared to where they are in terms of their size. It's about hundred million. <coughs> you can compare to the market cap. I don't know. Yeah, market, market cap. cap is about. If I'm not mistaken, was about three or no, six, five point five yeah. about six. So. Looking at it, it's about wow, uh, two hundred million. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> look at the debts that they have. Okay, uh, where is their debts here? Long term debt. Okay, quite. So they match it basically. Yeah, they. From, from, it, it's not like normal property developers where uh, a lot of debt uh, is. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a struggle with cash flow and debt lah. Any property yep. developer. What you want to look at is always cash flow and debt. Cash flow and yes. debt. You know how how do you manage that between these two? I think uh, as what you mentioned earlier, MJ, about uh, one segment of the business bringing in cash flow, and then yes. it's a it's a it's a balancing game between these two. Correct. And then also, if you look at the financing, if you go down to common stock. Yeah. Right. You can see that they use equity to finance. Ah yes right. yes. So, f so on twenty sixteen onwards, wow. Correct. Then they almost yeah. doubled. Uh, yes. In terms of equity. So. Yeah, anyway, um, I think the last one I just want to look at is uh, under ratios. Okay. And um, do they have the cash conversion cycle? There you go. CCC, yes. Average cash conversion cycle is down, down a little bit. Right. More. Yep, there yeah, you go. Yeah. So it has trend, trended upwards. upwards, right? It has gone from 60, 40 to 60 to now closer to 90, 80. Right? And then this is again reflective of the nature of the business. Nature of the business. So something to take note of. Of course, we prefer it to be lower than higher by Correct. and large, but we understand where Syntex is, you know, the, the, the packaging business is, there's a certain limit. Yes, and I yes. believe, 
I can't confirm if this is true, but I believe they are more, they are the biggest in One Malaysia, the, biggest, the uh. top two, top three kind of situation. Yeah. So remember they bought Daibochi. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, so. I mean I'm supposed to say like a black yeah, 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 but because right. of our historical references and experience. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. But I think where we would like to end this video is yes. that how do we summarize this? How I do guess? we summarize this? I, I guess um, doing research doesn't mean that you can come up with a buy and sell decision oh, yeah. with perfect information. Of course. And I think what we are trying to do is trying to look at certain clues to give us uh, better uh, validation. Yep. And when we look at numbers, you should not just look at numbers in itself. You should try yes. to tie it to like, we've been discussing about uh, the foray into property development and as a property developer, how would the cash look like? If you're looking into plastics, you're not talking about super high margins. And you know, the margins that we saw just now, gross was about, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think 30, was it? Yeah, roughly about 30, it's, it's increased, right? Right. But at the same time, when we look at these numbers, how does it correlate to the business nature of, of, of this? And I think when we look at numbers, uh, don't be fooled by, you know, a lot of times when we read on forums or we we, we conduct seminars, public seminars, yeah, yeah. people come to us and, and we said, eh, this one below NTA, uh, this one below PE. Uh, and and it's, it's, such a, it's such a nuance that when you make investing decisions, don't only look at, my rule of thumb is don't only look at one number, don't only look at one angle. I yeah, think. and always I would say, to add to your point, always assume that every number, every trend that you see is trying to trick you. It yes. might not, Yes. right? But it might be. So for example, uh, just to give an example, where let's say we look at the RIC declining, you yes. might say, well, that's a bad thing. Yeah. But assume that the number might trick you. Maybe, maybe that, they're working on projects yes. that will actually increase yes. their uh, uh, returns on capital, yeah. right? So you have to look for clues, go go read news and all that yes. to see. So then AGMs. Exactly. Yeah. Talk, talk to, you know, go, one thing we like is, you know, go on LinkedIn, find Syntex employees, just ask them, you know, yeah, what's going on, them. things yeah. like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think just to sum up, right, uh, for Syntex specifically, what can we conclude just from looking at um, the numbers and the public Yeah, I think well-managed uh, company, uh, bal balance sheet quite clean. I yes, mean, yes. considering they have... 30% in property development and half of the revenue derived or half of the profits derived from, from property, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's quite solid. I think where I would be interested to to look at is what else can they grow? What else can they grow? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be a, a stagnating land bank issue of trying to grow the property? I, yes. I don't know. Yes. Uh, how big is the plastic growing? Because we see other companies in the plastic packaging space uh, going into it. There's more competition coming up. So that would be questions that I would try to dig further. Yeah. 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 I mean, to your, to your point, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to add to your point, right? Go back to the income statement, right? Okay. You look, they are already at nearly 4 billion. Correct. Right. So the question is, right, to, to build on your point, if they're going to something new, mm. uh, for those of you all who are taking what we say seriously, it's not merely, oh, are they going to something new? Yes. It's, what are they going to go in that is a billion dollar opportunity? Yes. That is the question. Because then, I, I'm pretty sure at this size, uh, they're not looking at 100 million sales. Really. No, no, yeah. no point. Maybe it's yeah. a pet project. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So they're looking at that big, you know, jump. And, yeah. and you have to figure that out yes. as an investor. Otherwise, it won't be attractive. Now, that ties into my my final summary, which is, which is this. Uh, John has said, most of what I want to say, the only last thing I want to add is this. Based on the current trend, and I could be crucified for this in the comments, but based on the current trend, I don't think the future is going to be as exciting as the past. Based on current trend. Mm. But if they come up with, like I said, billion dollar opportunities, mm. then it's a different discussion. Yeah. Yes. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, remember to give it a like, you know, comment, subscribe as usual, click on the notification bell so that you know uh, whenever new videos pop, uh, you'll be exactly notified on the dot. And uh, we'll see you in the next quick dive.